So, Mayor, where were you this morning? Oh, Mayor, what are you going to do now? Why? But I gave you like four weeks to do it. No, you know, I'm still not. You are in there everything. Take time. Yeah, I'll take it in a bit. predicted grades this week to your tutor. I didn't give you good predicted grades, if I'm honest. Because your attendance, you miss class again. Again. You keep missing class. You're really far behind. So don't be shocked when you get your predicted grade from your tutor. Ah, Mir, come on. Well, I miss that I had a reason like every time. No, I, no, but I don't care if you had a reason. I just care that you missed the class. You could have a very good reason, you know. And I'm not sure that you're watching the videos. And then I will. And okay. I bring my math to go to our Okay. Okay. Anyways, what grades do you need for your application? teacher worry so much. To biology, too late now. No, still engineering, but audio. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, no, 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 it doesn't matter to me because it doesn't change the predictive grade. But uh, does that mean you need a higher or a lower grade? A bit higher. I need an extra B. So what does that make it now? Mm -hmm. BBC. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. What about me? What? My predicted grade. Uh, it's okay, I guess. Oh. I don't know. I can't work you out. I can't, I can't really predict what grade you'll get. I don't fully understand you. I don't know. I'm not part of human. What's that? What did you say? Like I am human, No, not you. It's difficult to understand you. Why? You're, you're smart. But you ask you ask lots of strange questions. Um about or That's it, yeah. That's too extreme. No, not that extreme. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You did it. How can you do that? Yeah, but I'm not confident. Okay, tell me what you did. Your tutor will tell you. Why? It's not you. Oh, I'm just a simple physics teacher. I couldn't tell you this. Yeah. Really? Sorry, sorry. It's individual story. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. What grade do you need in physics? Maybe. Okay. And for maths? Mm. And chemistry? Mm. Okay, you should, be okay. you should be okay. You would shock me if you didn't get a B in maths, considering you studied it at university. Uh, I think you should, but I know physics is harder than maths. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Where were you this morning? Ah, uh, see, I, as I was saying, I had to give everyone predicted grades today to your tutor. Predicted grades. So, you know, when two of my students don't show up for 9 o'clock again, it doesn't give me lots of reason to give a high predicted grade. You know, you have, you have, to, you have to work with me. You have to you give me something. You like but that doesn't matter. I still have to predict your grades. You know, we know that you know that we are hard working students. No. 
You, <laughs> you knew as you were saying that 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 was ridiculous. As it was coming out of your mouth, you knew that was ridiculous. Okay. Um, right, so we'll continue with materials. We're going to have a look at Hooke's Law. If you can write that down, please. Moosheries! Pen and paper for you. What do you need? Did you come to class with no pen? Well, it's just one pen for three students. <laughs> Again, with the inspiration of predicted grades. Please do not compare yourself to Newton. I just vote if I he would he would be offended. <laughs> uh, okay, Hooke's Law. Did you write that down now? Hooke's Law, yes? Yes? Mm -hmm. Oh come on. Okay, come on. I'm going. Right. So the motivation behind Hooke's Law is looking at problems like this in physics where something is stretching and the more you pull on it the more force it pulls back. This is quite common in physics in materials. A lot of materials have some kind of stretch factor. So even like obviously my clothes, you know, as I pull on it, it pulls back. But even things that you don't think are like this, like the table, it still has this behaviour. If I push down on the table, you can't quite see it, but the wood is slightly compressing, and then when I release it moves back. So a lot of things in physics behave like some spring. The only difference is some materials stretch more and some less. But it's quite common. So, what happens when you pull on this spring? Well, you get more force pulling back. And this gives us the idea of Hooke's Law. And Hooke's Law says that um, the force uh, needed to extend or compress a spring by distance x is proportional to that distance. So as a formula, f is equal to minus kx. k is how much you pull it, and f is the force. So you can see that uh, a bigger distance means a bigger force. Okay, got that? Continue. So the K is a constant. Fa well, faster, faster. Yellow, yellow. Uh, the K is a constant factor, and it's different for each material. It's called the um, stiffness. You know, um, like how hard the material is, how much it doesn't want to stretch. Um, and k x is usually a small number. Uh, so, what's the units for k? You can kind of see it from the formula. If you just rearrange it a little bit. Newton per meter. Yeah, Newton per meter. Yeah, so the k is Newtons per meter. Um, so, for this table, would it have a big k or a small k? Big. The bigger the k, 
the more force is required to stretch it. And for my jumper, let's go. Um, what about for like, um, I don't know, uh, a rubber band? Small. Very small, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's called the stiffness or the spring constant. Continue. This is Huck's law. The natural length, well, maybe you could guess actually, what do you think the natural length refers to? The original size, yeah. So the natural length L of a material is the length the material tries to return to. It's the length before any force. That is, it's the length it wants to be at. Yeah. Um, has anybody studied this before? Hooke's Law? You've seen it before? Anyone else? Mm -hmm. You don't think so? You have seen it? Yeah. Okay, continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. And what do you think the extension is? The gain distance? Yeah, the like the change. So the extension is the length at which the material is extended beyond its natural length. So, like you said, uh, Adnan, it's like the gained length, or yes. loss. Now, different books use different letters for extension. I kind of use delta x or x. Some books use e. I don't like that e for extension, because it, I don't know, just don't like it. Okay, got that? Yes? Yes? Okay. That is the X, is what I call it. All right. Um, so, what this graph represents, uh, I'll draw it here, a sort of simple experiment. Uh, you have some material and maybe for example you hang this material from the ceiling so this would be its natural length and then you put uh, weights at the bottom so you put a small weight here and it will extend a distance and there's a weight here which is equal to the force which is equal to mg so if you graph this, what you find is, as the extension increases, the force is bigger, or vice versa, a bigger force means more extension. So that's obvious, I think. But uh, let's see what the slope represents. So on the graph, if this is force and this is extension, then what does the slope represent here? Well, that would be the force over the extension. Uh, and if you think about your formula, F equals K delta X, then F over delta X is K. So actually the slope here is equal to the constant K. And the reason I'm just saying this is if you wanted to know what the constant is, you could do an experiment like this where you hang different weights on the material, measure the extension, measure the force of the weight, and plot the slope is the k. Sometimes in the exam they might give you a graph like this and they ask you from the graph what's the k for this material. 
So I think at least write down, draw this graph and write in on the graph slope <coughs> equals k. Yeah, you draw you drew this? Yeah. You all have your lab reports? Yes. With cover sheets? Yes. And have you got the lab book? Yes. No. I couldn't find it, so I know it's little, but I couldn't find it. But then you need to write a new one, because without the lab book... I will find it today. You w you're yeah. confident you'll find it? Not confident, but I know it's little. Like okay. If you don't find it, you need to make a new one, because without it, there's a chance you won't get any marks. I Remember, I did tell you this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Check until you find it, you really need it, okay? Alright, can I continue? Do you have this? Yeah? Okay. Uh, now, actually, the other thing is the slope uh, is the K, but what about the area? Let's have a look at the area. So, if we look at the area, the area would equal half the base by the height. Um, and what's the unit? Well, what's the unit for uh, x? Uh, newtons. Uh, sorry, meters. And for the f is newtons. And does anyone remember what newton multiply meter is? Newton meter. It's true, and it's something else as well. Uh, so it's turning force, but there's no actually turn in here, so it's a, there's something else. Huh? No, that's newton per meter squared. No, 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 no. Uh, at work. Yeah, yeah. So, the area represents the work. For example, um, if the extension, we'll say here, is, I don't know, 0 0.01 meters, and here the extension is 0 0.02, and you want to know how much work is required to pull the spring from an extension of 1 centimeter, to an extension of two centimeters, the area under the graph is the work required to go from one centimeter to two centimeter extension. Because when you think about it, if you have a spring, you do need to do work to pull it, right? So how much work is required is the area under the graph. So on your graph, add in area equals work. Yeah. Now, if you take this, well, actually, maybe we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, continue. Okay, uh, let us see. We have seen. Uh, this is ideal. In real life, the graph isn't perfectly straight like this, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But for most situations, it's roughly straight. Now, as I was saying. In real life, the graph will look more like this. It will be straight up until a point called the elastic limit. Beyond that point, the graph is no longer straight. So, um, if you have a spring, you can pull it. But if you pull it too much, it no, it's no longer like a spring anymore. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but if the spring gets stretched too much and you release, it doesn't quite have the same snapping back that it used to have. So there, everything has what's called an elastic limit. Beyond this limit, it's no longer elastic, stretchy. Does the spring go back because of the shape of it? It's because of the shape, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it, that's why if you stretch it too much, it loses its ability to stretch back, yeah. So this graph, they sometimes ask you to draw it. They want this they want to see that the student understands that it's Hooke's law up until a point and then it's no longer, you don't get as much force anymore. It starts to lose its stretchiness. So it levels off here. On the graph, what they want to see is extension, force, straight line, levels off, and here they want you to mark it as elastic limit. Okay. I, I've seen them ask for this graph a couple of times in the exam, so please uh, write it carefully in your book.
Okay. The, what's missing from this graph is um, the names of two parts of the graph. This part here, when Hooke's law is true, has a name, and then the part after this has a name as well. So here to here, this is called the elastic region. So you should write here elastic region for this part of the graph. Good. And this part is the opposite of elastic, which is called no. no. Everyone always says that, and it should no. be that plastic, plastic region. Yeah. The opposite of elastic in this context is plastic. No, there's elastic and inelastic collisions. And then there's elastic and plastic material. Trust me. Believe in me. Okay, continue. You wrote in elastic and plastic? Yeah? Okay. So some more terms. So elastic, that means the material obeys Hooke's law. <coughs> plastic doesn't follow Hooke's law. Elastic limit, what do you think that is? How would we describe this? Yeah, we're getting close. It's kind of like the point in between elastic and plastic behavior. So I went for the point it's no longer elastic and becomes plastic. Yeah. Okay, continue. No. Um. Continue. Okay, so a mass M is hung to an elastic material which is suspended from the ceiling or a mass M sits on top of a spring. In both cases, the situation is the same. The mass obeys uh, Hooke's law, or at least the spring does, uh, and we want to find some equation for the motion. Uh, let's look at the first case. Um, so, what we're going to look at is we have a mass hanging, well, we have a, a, a rubber band or whatever and its length is L and then you come along and you hang a mass at the end of it and you pull it down and you release it and what will happen? It will go up and then yeah. down and it will move up and down like this okay so it has this up down motion and do you remember what this is called this up down motion? Mm -hmm. simple harmonic motion so let's have a look here um, first thing I want to do is I want to know if I hang the mass onto the rubber band how far down will it move so what will happen is it will continue to move down until the force from the rubber band equals the weight let's find out what that is so we want to know when will F equal W and F we can use Hooke's law and weight is mg so the extension will be mg over k. 
So this extra little bit it moves down, uh, that's mg over k. So far, is this okay? Yeah. Now, um, I'll just draw it over here since I'm a bit out of space. Or, and I'll just draw it here. So imagine I pull it past this. So here is L, here is mg over k, and then here's me x. I can pull it more than this. So just so we can all picture this, there's a rope on the ceiling, or a rubber band on the ceiling. I put a mass on it gently and I let go. Uh, carefully it sinks and then it hangs there. So it's hanging from the ceiling. And then I come along and grab it and pull it down and let go and then it starts to move. So it's pulled down an X and released. Let's work out what the force is on it. So when I release it, is the force acting up or acting down? It's acting up, of course, because it wants to go back up. So let's calculate how much force that is. It'll be the force from the, the string minus what? What's acting down? G. The weight. The weight, yeah. Okay. So what's the formula for the force from the string? Well, that's Hooke's law. So that's K multiplied by extension, yeah, minus mg. What about the minus and the point? The minus is just to remind us that it acts opposite. So as long as I just remember that on my picture, it's okay. The minus is just to indicate it always acts opposite to the spring. Uh, if you pull it this way, the spring is pulling the opposite way. Yeah. So I I don't have a minus here, but I have a minus here. I just need these to be opposites. One is going up and the other is going down. Yeah. And uh, okay. What do I put in the brackets here? The extension. Mg over k plus x. The extension. Yeah. Mg over k plus x. It's because that's how much it's past the natural length mg over k uh, plus x. If you expand this, what do you get? mg plus kx minus mg. So you're left with f equals um, kx, because these cancel. Mm -hmm. Now what does um, f equal? Okay. ma. So ma equals kx. So then A equals K over MX. So we get this formula. Now watch this little trick. If I say let omega equal square root K over M, then what will K over M equal? Omega squared. And you might say, well, why am I using this letter to represent this? Well, it lets me rewrite this as A equals omega <laughs> squared X. This form is up familiar. Yeah, the acceleration. Yeah, the simple harmonic motion acceleration. So therefore, what we've done is we've worked out that for the spring hanging on the ceiling, it is simple harmonic motion with an angular velocity of root k over m. This means if I use the formula t, t equals 2 pi over omega, I can get this result, 2 pi root m over k. So what we've just done is we've worked out a formula for the time it'll take the mass to go up and back down. So it's kind of like a pendulum formula. Uh, it's the periodic time for it to go up and come back down. So you notice if I make the k bigger, if I make it more stiff, does that increase or decrease the time? Decrease. decrease. If I made the K smaller, like a rubber band, then what happens to the T? Increase. An increase. Yeah. So the T and the K have an opposite relation here. A big K makes a smaller T, and a small K makes a bigger T. The reason, if you think about it, if the K is really small, this makes it really stretchy. So if I pull it down and let go, it's going to go and then come back down after a while. Whereas if the K is really big, it's not really stretchy, so I just pull it and it goes bump. You know. uh, so it's an opposite relationship here. And what's really nice is it's the same formula for 
this situation as it is for this situation as it is for this situation. In other words, this is like the formula for a spring or a rubber band in simple harmonic motion. And it works in all these situations. So I won't prove it for all of them, uh, but I'll tell you it's the same for all of them. What you might find interesting, in the pendulum, do you remember the formula for the pendulum? 2 pi root L, L over G. There was no M in that formula, right? Mm -hmm. But here, the M does affect the time. That's a big difference here. Uh, but what you notice doesn't affect the time? If I pull this down really, really far, will that increase or decrease the T? Mm -hmm. No, it has no yeah, effect. Because um. it, the only thing that affects it is the M, which is not changed, and the K, which is not changed. So it's kind of a m strange result that even if you pull this down really, really far and let go, it's the same time as if you just pull it down a little bit. I was thinking about this when I said to the F, it would be stupid. No, it's not stupid. It's quite, it's quite surprising result. Because you would think that how much you pull it down should affect the time, and it doesn't affect the time. If you put a bigger mass on it, it affects the time. But how much you pull it doesn't affect it. Uh, the time is from... From bottom, top, back to the bottom. Uh, to do one cycle. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I can't remember. One of these formulas is in the formula book. So if it's this one, then you have to use this to make this formula. Or if it's this one, you have to use this and this to make this formula. I don't think both are in the formula book. It's gone. This is in the formula book. And then one of these. I don't remember which one. I have a feeling it's this one and this one in the book. No. No, I don't know. Um, one of them is in the book. Okay, so this is very important. You, of course, before you ask, you know that I, this is not proof, because I tell you which proofs are on the exam. So they won't ask you to prove this for me, right? It's the results. But the way my brain works is it's easier for me to remember how to prove this than it is to remember the formula. Because if you said at the start of the class, what's the formula? I said, I don't remember. I have to prove it first. No. Nah, deep down you know you love it. Look deep inside your heart. Okay, you got this? Now, because this is simple harmonic motion, all the simple harmonic motion formulas you did in mechanics apply to this as well. So, you remember, like, for example, um, x equals a cos omega t, mm -hmm. all these formulas to apply. Okay, continue. So we have this formula, t is uh, 2 pi root m over k. Note the absence of l, a and l. So the natural length and the amplitude does not affect the time. Right, our first question, and if you can write this down then we'll do it. A rubber band has a natural length of 10 centimeters and a constant of 1. The rubber band is stretched twice its length. How much force is required to do this? So you can write or draw. And you uh, no. I know what you did wrong. What's the natural length? Ten. Ten what? Mm -hmm. 
unit they are. Okay, uh, let's have a look. So, the force is k times the extension. What's the extension here? Yeah. And the k is 1. So the answer is 0 0.1 newtons. So it was 10 centimeters and was stretched to 20 centimeters. So the extension is 10. Uh, next example. To what? To this? The gay is one. Yes. Ah, um, oh, okay. Good question. Can I do the next one? Yes. Okay. Again, you can draw or write, and then I'll do it. Okay, 2 kilogram hangs on the ceiling and extends by 5, what's the K? So, um, we have uh, some material of length L and then it extends when we put a, what did I say, a 2 or a 5? A 2 Oops. kg on it. It extends by uh, 5 centimetres. So what's happening here is the force here equals the weight. So you have K delta X equals W. How did you know that it Well, it's, I, it's not moving. It just, it's just hanging from the ceiling. So, you know, nobody came along and knocked it into motion. It's like you have a string on the, you have something hanging from the ceiling and you just hook a mass onto it. And then it just dangles there. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, mg. Uh, K equals mg over delta x, which equals 2, 9.81 over 0 0.05. Uh, that's, did you, did you use 5? Uh, uh, 2, 120th. 40 times 9.81. Uh, what do you get for the K? So, uh, 392.4 newtons per mm -hmm. meter. Uh, this one's okay. Yes. Yeah. Your head will fall off one day doing that. That was a really deep crack. Okay, continue. What? All right. A spring of constant two is attached to the wall. A boy pulls it ten centimeters. How much work was done? Um, so it's like there's a spring on the wall and the boy comes along and just pulls on it 10 centimeters. How much work did the boy do? Uh, so I'll just, uh, we'll just draw that one and do it together here. So, so we have our spring here. The K is um, 2. Uh, the K is 2 newtons per meter. And the boy pulls on it a distance of uh, mm. 10 centimeters. How much work is done? So uh, the formula for the work done will be a half 
f delta x. Just be careful though, well here the delta x is 0.1, it's the distance the spring moved, not necessarily the same thing as the extension, uh, but in this case it is. Anyways, uh, we need a formula for f, what's our formula for f? k delta x. So the formula is actually a half k delta x squared. So that's a half 2, which cancels 0.1 squared, which is 0 0.01 joules, which is 10 millijoules of work was done. The delta x here is not quite the extension, it's the, the, the change in the extension, the change in the length. It's usually the same thing as the extension, but just to be careful, remember the graph? Yes. It's the distance between the two lengths, which is not quite the same thing as the extension, because for example, this could already be extended by one centimeter, and this could be maybe extended by 11 centimeters. So it's 10 centimeters that you use in the formula. What's happening in this case is that the, the spring is at the natural length at the beginning. So the boy is actually pulling it from zero to point 0.1. So the distance he pulls it is the same thing as the extension, because it was originally at the natural length. So it wasn't with the, like, the difference. Like the difference, the, like yeah. The extra distance. Yeah, kind of like this, yeah. Maybe I should use a different letter here, like uh, S or something. It's the, the change in the length of the spring. Which is usually the extension, because usually the spring starts yeah, at the natural length anyways. But technically it's not the same thing as extension. A bit like Remember how we said distance and displacement is not the same thing, but usually they are anyways for the mm -hmm. question. Kind of like the same thing here. The extension and the change in the length is usually the same thing, but not always. Yeah? Okay. And again, you notice how I didn't bother with the minus because the minus is just to remind me of the opposite nature. Okay, continue. Why did you do something? Huh? This one is from Hooke's Law for F. The other one is just the work. Okay, continue. Adnan? A rubber band attached to the steel, a hundred gram weight is hung on the rubber band and extends five centimeters. The weight is pulled down a further four centimeters and released. How long until the weight reaches its maximum height? Okay, so you can draw or write this down and then I'll do it. <coughs> That is not scooting weather. It's bus weather. Okay, can I do it now? You drew it? You drew it the wrong way in there? Yeah. Hung from the ceiling. Vertical. Okay. So, first part. There's the ceiling. There's the natural length. And then how much is the weight? Oh, it's 0.1 gram, uh, kilograms. And it extends by... Five centimeters. So just like the last one, it extends until the weight equals the force. So F equals W, K delta X equals W, 
k delta x equals mg, k equals mg over delta x, 0 0.1, 9.81. Um, but how can we tell from the question that x equals to the zero? Because the weight is hung and extends the distance 5 centimeters. There's no reason for it to be moving in simple harmonic motion because you no, no one comes, no one disturbs it. You know, like I mean, if you hang something on a hook or a, a string and walk away, it doesn't start bobbing up and down when you leave. You know, you ha you would then have to pull it a further distance down to get it moving. You know, so what happens here is the question is broken into two halves. Five centimeters is the extension it makes by itself, and then I pull it a further four, which causes the motion. Yeah. So, um, what's the um, k here, please? Uh, or actually, I've got my k. Uh, yeah, 19.62. Um, then I pull it a further four centimeters, and then it will move in simple harmonic motion with an amplitude of four centimeters. I want the time to reach its maximum height, so it's bobbing up and down with amplitude of four centimeters. I want the time to go from the bottom to the top. That time is half the periodic time because it's only half a journey. Mm -hmm. So that's a half 2 pi root mm -hmm. m over k, which is pi root m over k, which is pi 0.1 over 19.62. No, that's backwards. Point two two four seconds. This is A question usually. Uh, yeah, A or B. Okay, continue. Oh, no, that was my last example I wanted to do. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting too generous no. and soft now that you know. Yes. Um I think what we'll do is We'll do them today because, um, what? They are so. Sh yeah, they're so short. If I give you, I mean, how long did it take to do those questions I just did? Ten minutes, and I did five of them. True, true. <laughs> but I have complete confidence in you, mostly. And. Um, I'll give you a few minutes to do these and then I'll go through the answers. So we'll have a lecture and a tutorial today. Um, I don't think you'll find these too hard. Like one, two, three... Yeah, I'm five. five is for me, okay? Yes, five is hard. But one to four, you know the deal. One to four is not and five is. So if you can do one to four now and try five... Five means... Can you, can you go back for a second? Yeah. Yeah. 